Hello, I'm Kareem Smith, a multimedia journalist at Barbados Today. As you're well aware, it's been about a week since Russia invaded Ukraine. It's a conflict that has been dominating news cycles, including the fallout economically and otherwise for us here in Barbados. And from all reports, unfortunately, it seems the worst may be yet to come. With me this morning is Mr. Alexander Sonto Ora, a Nigerian student, 25 years old, who for the last 11 months has been studying management at the State University of Telecommunications in the capital, Kiev. Well, today, Alexander is in Poland, Ukraine's neighbor to the west, in the capital city of Warsaw, and he's seeking refuge from the very troubling developments that are unfolding in Ukraine. Alexander, thanks for joining us. Could you start off by giving us a summary of your experience over the last week or so? Okay. Um, I, I was in Ukraine. I was studying management in the capital of Ukraine, which is Kiev. Um, when the whole thing started, I, I was trying to leave the country. When I got to the train station, uh, that was where I saw the first discrimination. Um, they, they were allowing mostly um, Ukrainians and other white people before they allow Africans. They were only allowing like few Africans, just like three. After they have already packed up the rest of Ukrainians, then at the end of everything, we started shouting and telling them that you said women and children first. Why are we not seeing you allowing African women? We started protesting and shouting. Then they told us we should relax. The next train, they are going to pick the African women. That was how we were able to get the African women out. So um, we waited again, and there was a train going to Poland. I jumped into the train with the other two Africans. They called the police on us. When the police came, the police chased us out of, out of our cabin and told us to get out that this is specifically for Ukrainians. I said, okay, but I don't see anybody checking passports here. So how do you identify a Ukrainian? Is it by looking at your face or what? Or is it the language? If it's about the language, there are so there are Africans that can speak the, that can speak the language and they are there. So we didn't panic. We didn't say anything after the whole thing. We waited for another train, and the train was going to the place we want to go, which is Lviv, a border near Poland, a city with border with Poland. So when we saw the train, they told us the train is not going to Lviv. So we have to copy the number of the train and send it to our friend who is a Ukrainian, and she confirmed that the train is going to Lviv, and the train was already about Lviv. So we, I, we hung on on the, uh, on the door. I told the, they either open the door or we die here. So they have no other option than to open it for us. That was how we got to the train. We were the only Africans in the train. Then we got to um, the city, which is Lviv. When, when, when we got to the city, which is Lviv, we got to the city in the morning, 7 a.m. Um, we saw other trains leaving. And the train was leaving for Poland. I asked some people there, what is going on? They told me that these people are only taking their people and few Africans. They only take like African women that, that are with children or that need to at least go. Um, that, 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 that has like all the African women that looks vulnerable. And they don't take much. It might take like three Africans, then the rest will be Ukrainian. The, at the end of everything, we started shouting and telling them, you said women and children. Why are you always saying women and children and you're doing the opposite? So when I was trekking to the border, um, there were several um, Ukrainians on the road offering us food and, and water. Then we we trekked for ha more than half, on a day, half a day because I left Lviv two hours after I came to Lviv. I came to Lviv around 7 a.m. So two hours later, I have to leave. I... I, I I reached near the border because there was a barricade set up by the military, mm. the police and others before the, um, you can get to the border, which is 30 minutes away to the border. So when I got there, I saw so many people, there were thousands of people. And it was like, it was a, segreg a segregated line because mm. ha this side, there were foreigners, the other side, they were Ukrainian. So I asked some people there what is going on. They told me they said Ukrainian on this side, um, foreigners the other side. Because I saw both uh, Northern Africans, Western Africans, and other 
other um, Indians and Middle Easterners. So I said, why are they doing this? I, I thought it, they're going to do it according to the person that first came. So, okay, let me watch what's going on. Ask them how many days have you been here? The other one said he has been there for like two days. The other one said he's been there for three days. I told him, no, I can't, I can't do this kind of shit. We have to find a way to get through. So in the morning, that was around 4 a.m. the next day, I, I, I started talking to some people. I told them that, we have to break through. We are thousands. They can beat all of us. I'm sorry. I was asking, while you were at the border, did you ask any of the officials there why they were taking so long to allow you they guys never to cross? Uh, uh, and all you want them to do is to go back and start again. That is not possible. So I told them that this is not cool. They came again and told us Africans, Indians, and Arabs should leave and go to the Romanian border. Then I asked him, you want us to go to Romanian border, but Nigerian ambassador told us to come to this border that they, we had agreement with the Polish government. I I thought it was Polish uh, border guards, but at the end of the day, I saw their flag. They were, we, we are still at the Ukrainian side. So it's the Ukrainian border guards, was not the Polish border guards. So we waited and they came again. The other one was calling him braces, and he realized that this thing is getting serious because we started shouting. Then... He said, women and children only. He said, okay, we are going to wait. Then they started well, taking in only women and children. They never discriminated. They took in both African women, anybody that is a woman and children and a child went through till evening. In the evening was when they allowed the men to move in. We never had issues at the Polish border. They gave us food, they gave us blankets, they gave us water, they gave us all kinds of things, they gave us free SIM cards. Where where are you guys now, staying right now? And, and how are you? currently in Warsaw, Poland. Yeah, and some staying... People, some people turned back, to be honest. I had about 50 guys that, that I, I was strolling with. They turned back and went to Slovakia border. They will have to leave again and go to another city. They just came in yesterday and called me the other in another country. Okay. But but who 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 are you staying with? Where are you staying? Is it um, a hotel, a guest hotel. house, or with with a family? I'm currently in a hotel. Okay. okay. Um, and walk me through the the period before the conflict escalated to this point. Was there any indication while you were in Kiev that things would would escalate to the point that they that they eventually did? Well, the whole time I was living in Kiev, there is always talks about war, and the war has been going on since 2014. But we never thought the war would escalate. It was like an ethnic issue. We never knew that the war would escalate. We thought the war was mostly for at the Eastern European side, um, Eastern U Ukraine side, where they had border with Russia because they've been fighting there almost every day. And what what did war look like did you did you see or did you actually experience um any of the shelling any of the bombing any of the the fighting on the streets i i i never wanted to experience it but i was hearing the blast i don't know where it was coming from but my building was shaking and i never w wanted to know where it's coming from i was just trying to run away because I, I looked down from my building and I realized that almost everybody on my building is running away with bag. And I'm a foreigner. If the Ukrainians are running, why am I going to stay there? Have you left any of your friends or, or relatives in, in the capital city? No. I, I All my friends left before me. Yes, some of my friends, some of my friends left even before the state of emergency because they've been hearing the news. But they were always already panicking. I told them that they should not panic. This war has been going on. It's not today, but I really don't know that it will escalate. Okay. So you, so you haven't left any any of your friends or colleagues or anything. No, all of them have left. Everybody is gone. I'm in contact with all of them right now. They are already outside Ukraine. And what about your um, your home country, your friends and relatives um, in in Nigeria? What what assistance have they been able to to offer you in this very troubling well, time? I I I haven't told my mom. I just told my mom I, I'm okay. 
because my mom has high BP, so I don't want to get her in trouble because if she realized that I, I was going through all this, it's going to be a very big issue for her. And I'm, it's like more medical bills to pay. Um, okay. And the the other thing, I, I just want to take you back to the, the experiences that you said that you had, that you encountered at the border. Would, would you say that you have ever experienced um, any inkling of, of racism or racial tension while you were actually studying in Ukraine? What what was that period? Those, what were those 11 months like for you? From the landlords. The, the landlords usually don't the rent to foreigners. They always, they always tell us no Africans. The, uh, but if it's other Europeans, they will allow it, but no Africans. If, they, if it's other Westerners like Americans, so far, you know, black. They're going to allow you. But if you're black, they're not, they're not going to allow you. They, will, they always say that we are dirty and we keep their houses smelling. Why? They always say, they say, they say we keep their houses smelling because of the, the, our food. I just realized that because of our food. And most times when we are packing out, they always refuse to give us our, our deposit. Even if they're going to give us, they have to cut it like, they have to give us like water. When they give us water, they, they, they tell us that it's, we spoiled something. When you ask what is the thing we spoiled, they, they just show you like a little pen that was crashed or a little place that was crashed. And they will tell you that they have to paint the whole thing again. And what about, what about on the streets in terms of law enforcement or, or anything like that? Not really. No, I usually don't have issue. Okay. Okay. All right. So you you have outlined your journey from um, the capital Kiev to uh, Warsaw, Poland, where you currently are now, based on everything that's being reported in the media, um, and everything that perhaps you may be hearing from from persons, um, back who who perhaps may be in Ukraine. What, what would you say is your next step in this journey? Do you have any idea where you intend to go from here? Oh, well, if the, if the war stops very fast, I will go back to Kiev. If it doesn't stop fast, uh, I have no other option than to go home. Um, and did you, did you at any point feel as though you were in immediate danger, like the, the shelling, the, the um, firepower was so close to, to you that you felt as though you would have been um, in danger of being injured or anything no. like that? No. Just far off in the distance? No. Um, 25-year-old uh, Alexander Santo Ora, uh, a Nigerian student who has fled the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, uh, and is now residing in Poland in the midst of, of a growing refugee crisis because of the, the Russian in, invasion of Ukraine. Uh, I am multimedia journalist, Kareem Smith, and on behalf of myself, uh, my producer, Kobe Brooms, and the entire team here at Barbados today, I want to say thank you very much for joining us. <music>